All right, let's get started in our studies on CISA. Let's first talk about the process. When you do an audit, there is a whole process, and in order to take the exam, they expect you to know this process. They don't expect you to know this particular pen test tool or that particular methodology. Because when you do IS auditing, the field is so broad, so vast, that uh, you can cover anything from the nuclear industry to health informatics, which is my background. Instead, we're going to be focusing on the general process, which can apply to then any industry or any type of audit situation. Before we get going, I'd really like to share with you a couple of things to impress upon you the seriousness of cybersecurity. Let's first take a look at a document here. This is from PricewaterhouseCoopers, and it was recently published. And PricewaterhouseCoopers is an, a big audit firm, and they do IS auditing, IT auditing, as well as financial auditing. And you'll notice they talk about 10 minutes on the stark realities of cybersecurity more than just an IT challenge, it's a business imperative. And as we talk about certified IS auditor, we need to think not just as technologists, not just I'm looking for buffer overflows or I'm looking for open ports, but we need to look at a much broader sort of range here. We need to look at, are people doing what they're supposed to be doing? And do they even know what they're supposed to be doing? As we go through this class, we're gonna talk about how do we approach making sure that there is some kind of procedure in place and are they adhering to it and how do we report it and how do we handle irregularities and even management trying to conceal things. Like I said, this is a very broad, broad topic. You're not expected to know specific little tools or exact standards or procedures, but you are expected to know that they exist and how they fit in the overall framework. I'd like to share with you another thing. If we go to SANS.org and we go down to the 20 critical security controls here, we can see that, okay, inventory of authorized and unauthorized devices, wireless device control, data recovery, malware defense, boundary defense, data loss, incident response. Yes, these are the topics that we're very comfortable with as technologists. We need to, as the auditor, look beyond that. We need to see okay, is there even some kind of control or procedure in place? So this is what we're going to be focusing on. Why don't we get going on talking about the audit process? Starting out with, we're going to talk about what ISACA is all about. Um, and ISACA is actually an acronym that they use now. It used to actually stand for something longer. Get to that in a moment. We'll talk about developing and implementing an audit strategy and how you plan for and conduct an audit. However, again, because this can be everything from automotive to um, uh, government, there are no specific individual one-size-fit-all plans. However, there are many, many recommendations, standards, and guidelines and procedures and tools that we're going to take a quick look at on the ISACA site. We'll talk about conducting that audit, like I said, We'll talk about also evidence life cycle and how do you maintain evidence and how do you um, make sure the evidence is relevant and it's good. And we'll talk about communicating issues and risks and we'll talk about supporting the implementation of risk management and control practices. So let's talk about ISACA. And this is the, the term ISACA. Uh, is now, uh, they, they call themselves by that only, the acronym only, but it used to stand for the Information System Audit Control Association. They, they don't use that whole big name anymore. If we go to ISACA's site, we can familiarize ourselves a little bit with them. We can see this is ISACA's site. You can become an ISACA member. There's over 100,000 members in almost all countries in the world. And their whole idea when they started out was there were similar people who did a, a similar job of trying to figure out, are we in compliance? And they got together and they said, okay, what is it that we all have in common? And can we come up with some standards, some global standards that can be adopted in any situation? Now, as we look through these topics here, granted, they are aimed at much larger organizations, but you can pare down 
the uh, concepts even to smaller organizations. You just don't have to maybe um, think in terms of many, many departments and people. But the principles still apply regardless of whatever. So we can see the ISACA site here. And one of the first things that they talk about is this concept of the code of ethics. And as a CISA, you are required to uphold the professional code of ethics. And basically, um, it's about how you conduct yourself, how you protect your client's assets, and how you um, do your audit and how you uh, uh, report your findings. So this code of ethics, it guides our conduct as professionals and also in a personal way when we conduct our audit. And um, we're all required to follow the guidelines and we must uh, perform tasks that adhere to the code of ethics. And if we actually go take a look at ISACA's code of ethics right here, we can see that they require us to and, and you'll need to at least know the gist of this. Support the implementation of and encourage compliance with appropriate standards. And ISACA was all about standards. We're going to take a quick look at some of the standards in a moment. Perform duties with objectivity and due diligence. The idea is that we do everything that is reasonably possible. We are diligent um, and we do everything that is reasonable to discover and um, report uh, any irregularities uh, when we do our audit. And um, we maintain privacy and confidentiality. And we uh, only communicate our findings to appropriate persons. And we uh, maintain our own competency. Uh, the ISACA group, uh, when you get your CISA, requires that you maintain your um, certification by uh, getting regular continuing education. And that uh, we inform appropriate parties so we don't just go telling anybody about what we discover, only the appropriate parties. And we try to educate all the stakeholders involved. So we want to professionally educate not just the managers we're working with, but upper management as well as uh, the workers so that everybody understands, all stakeholders, they understand their role in information security. When we talk about auditing, auditing is not, like I said, just scanning for open ports, looking for default passwords, services that need to be shut down. It is about looking at whole processes. How do you guys actually do this? I mean, if you're creating this, how do you go from here to here in every process that you go through to get to here? In larger organizations, they have established processes, and these are processes that have worked for them for a very long time. And um, a good organization, organization that's doing its own due diligence will have established standards and procedures. There are also, depending on the type of industry, lots of regulatory requirements. And as an auditor, we need to understand, first of all, well, how is it that you guys do things? How is it that you want to do things? What's your best practice? Now, what's the industry best practice? What are any government regulations? So you can see that if you're an auditor, you need to know, first of all, the industry you're working in. And you need to understand the process of this particular business that you're looking at. And I assure you, you're not going to be doing it alone. You'll be part of a larger team. And you'll be doing things that work with your own particular skill set. So it's all process and procedure. What are your procedures? Are you guys actually washing your hands before preparing food kind of thing? Are you actually uh, locking desktops before you leave your workstation? Are you actually closing server doors? Do you actually have a guard there watching cameras? I mean, what is your procedure? And now, are you adhering to it? Then also, not only that, but what is the actual organization itself? Are there any gaps in the way the organization is set up? Uh, as well as job functions. Uh, so we're going to be auditing how people, individuals do their jobs. And we're not trying to come down on them like the cops or anything. We're trying to help organizations um, determine are they on target. Because really, as uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers pointed out in their other document, if you don't have a secure environment in terms of your data and your systems, you don't have much of a business. So we're helping them do that. 
And then, of course, we're also looking at systems. We're looking at databases. We're looking at networks. We're looking at um, firewalls. We're looking at the more technical aspects of their systems. So when we do auditing, it's called a function. It's an, an audit function. And we don't just go charging in there. We spend some time planning, really understanding what it is that we're supposed to do. And then, of course, we perform our audit. We organize our report. We report it to the appropriate parties. And also, we manage. We come back and say, OK, um, uh, I recommended that within six months you should have done ABC. Let me see if you've done it. So we do a follow-up. Did you guys follow up on the recommendations? And then also, of course, we use uh, standards and legal requirements to do our auditing. The next thing we're going to do is actually go to ISACA's site and look at some of their standards. Again, you don't need to memorize them, but you should be aware of them, and you should be aware of how they relate to the job of the CISA.